Hello, YouTube listeners, students, friends, colleagues. This is the part two of Bubble Sort. I'm Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Faculty of Computer Science, El Camino College, Torrance, California. Uh, <clears throat> before you watch this video, please watch part one first, where we described the logic of Bubble Sort through some PowerPoints in great detail that will set you up a little bit better to understand the source code that we are going to do in this video. Okay, so first of all, we want to revisit the bubble source Java applet at Harvard University X source Java applet website. Let's click on that one. This is the Java applet. We're going to show you how the bubble sort works. So let's pick the bubble sort first. And the mechanism would be that <clears throat> as I step through this, uh, bubble source source code is going to compare evaluate location J with J plus one. Evaluate location J is higher than the value at location J plus one. They will be swapped, and you'll see the swapping happening right now. And this swap is going to continue as long as value at J is higher than j plus 1 which is the case until I find something larger than that which I don't see because every other value is smaller than that so this swapping will continue all through the iteration through the array so I'm just gonna quickly keep doing it okay so swap will continue <clears throat> and part 1 explains that in great detail Swap, 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 in last swap, largest value got bubbled in the correct location in the array and notice as a result we have created two parts to the array. This is the unsorted is still, and that's the sorted. In each iteration through the unsorted array, the largest value will be bubbled to the correct location at the end of the array. I can just kind of uh, run this fast so you can see it happening again. And notice that in second iteration, the second value got bubbled to the correct location. Okay, that's all we need to remember for now. So based on this Java applet, as you saw the demo, these are the observations we can make. These are the three observations we can make that for ascending order sorting, if an item at location J is larger than that item J plus one, then swap them. You saw that, that if item at the left was higher in value, it got swapped with the item to the right. And this will actually help sorting because smaller item will be at location J and larger at J plus one. Now in each such iteration, as you saw through the array, the largest value is bubbled to the last location in the array. And this creates two subarrays. On the left, the unsorted, and on the right, the sorted. We saw that one right here. Okay, I'm not getting that picture back. Not this one. Okay, we don't want that one. We just need the Safari. Yeah, so you saw that the sorted and the unsorted. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> and the third thing was <clears throat> in each source code iteration, the sorted subarray grows by one while the unsorted shrinks by one. And this process continues until whole array is sorted. There's the fourth observation that the bubbling process, when we are bubbling the largest value to the last element in the unsorted array, 
does not look, does not iterate through the array that is already sorted. And we're going to go through these observations one by one and then see how we can code them in our sort function. Okay, so we'll take relevant observations and code them in Xcode. So observation one was that for ascending order sorting, if item at location j is larger than the item at j plus one, then swap them. This will help sorting because smaller item will be at location j and larger at j plus one. And if you call the array as ARR, then code for that will be something like this, that if ARRJ value is larger than ARRJ plus one value, then this is the swap code that in a buffer somewhere, we save the value of ARRJ and then swap into ARRJ, the value at ARRJ plus one. And then since we save this value in the buffer, we swap into ARRJ plus one, the value of the buffer. So we're just gonna take this code and code that in Xcode. And here's my Xcode where my bubble sort function is sitting empty and I'm gonna put that code in there. There you go. Okay, so why am I getting these? Ignore these errors, it'll work. Actually, I can show you that it will work. Yeah, there you go. Build fit, user one. Okay, yeah, J, I'm gonna fix that in a minute. Well, for, for now, let's put int J here. Zero. We don't really need it, but just to compile the code. Okay, I'm missing here a semicolon. Good, so, so that'll succeed. We need to make sure that code compiles at each point. Okay, let's go back to our PowerPoint. <clears throat> then this loop that's gonna do the swap code, I'm gonna call, call that bubbling loop because it's actually bubbling the largest value to the last element in the array. So we should wrap the swap code in previous slide inside a loop that would bubble the largest value in the array to its correct sorted position at the end. And that loop will look like this. For int j equals zero, j less than len minus one, j plus plus. And then swap code we just did will be embedded inside that. So I'm gonna take this and add that to my Xcode. Let's just take that. And we are gonna explain why loop condition is the way it is. Okay. Okay, there it is. So let me indent this structure, shift right, and over here I'm gonna put my for loop. And over here, I'll give my condition for for loop. Actually, that's not needed, but doesn't hurt. And then I don't need my int j equal to zero because I already defined int j equal to zero here. And once again, we can see that it's going to compile. Okay, so this, this is what I'm calling a bubbling loop and a bubbling loop. Once this loop iterates through front of the array to the end of the array, it will bubble the largest value to the last position in the unsorted array, and that element will be unsorted. We need to explain this condition here. So, <clears throat> explanation for the bubbling loop condition. Because swap code compares value at location j with j plus one, the if condition below is used, that ARRJ is great, if this is true, ARRJ is greater than ARRJ plus one, then there's a swap. So recall that for arrays, largest inbound index is length minus one, okay? And we were calling in our code length equal to len, 
So since subscript of last remember is len minus one, the loop condition j less than len minus one is needed. Okay. That is because the right side of comparison expression, this one, accesses subscript j plus one. So largest value, inbound value of j plus one. Okay, so this is actually incorrect is less than less than len minus one okay let's fix that so since subscript of last i remember is len minus one the loop condition j less than len minus one is needed that is because right side of comparison expression this one has the access to subscript j plus one so therefore, the largest inbound value of j plus 1 can be the largest inbound array subscript that is less than len minus 1, okay? Len minus 1 is uh, the largest inbound index. So j plus 1, because we are adding 1 to the j, so j has to be j plus one has to be less than that because we are adding one here okay that means j has to be less than len minus two okay so that's the explanation for the loop condition okay so let's we did we do that in our code x code already yeah we did that so then last thing is how to keep bubbling the largest value in unsorted subarray to last position which is sort control loop so if we run the code the way we just showed so far like here it's just gonna stop after bubbling one value we need to do this in a way that all values, the whole array is sorted. So this loop has to be placed inside another loop called sort control loop. Okay. So for that is that we have another loop here outside where int i, okay, i is uppercase here. I can fix that. that i equal to zero, i less than len. And once again, that's because the largest index has to be uh, less than the array length. So we need to put this bubbling loop inside this sort control loop. And next we do that in the X code as well. So we take this piece of code, uh, shift it, to the right and then we take this one and put this one here <clears throat> and do the end of the sort control loop Okay, <clears throat> now this will work. Uh, the way it's given here, this will work, except it's a bit inefficient. Okay, I will show you. So let me expose the main function and you'll see that this code is going to work. Here's my main function. Here I'm declaring an array of five elements which is obviously not sorted. Then I'm printing the array before sorting. That's gonna show numbers in this sequence. Then I'm calling the bubble sort, this function sending the array, which is I A R R, which I just did here. And five elements in the array. So when this line is executed, 
then this code will be executed. And then sorting is done. And then I print it after sorting. Okay. So let's just run it now. And array before sorting was 1, 9, 10, 2, 11, not sorted. Array after sorting is sorted, 1, 2, 9, 10, 11. So you can see that obviously that code works. But this code has a little bit of a defect in it. One, th one thing that we mentioned was that one characteristic for efficient bubble sort should be that <clears throat> when unsorted arrays looked, the code should not go through the sorted portion. So in the first iteration, it should do all uh, array element. Second iteration should do one less, and after that one less, and so on. So we have to control <coughs> the bubbling loop in a way that it doesn't go through these sorted elements that have been sorted already. Okay. That's easily done that we can just put minus i here in the loop condition. Okay. And the reason it works is that first time i is zero, so it's going to go through all the loop elements, all the array elements, like all of them, as you saw in the Java applet. Second time, i will be one. So it's going to skip that very last element that already got sorted. Third time, i will be two. And it's going to skip the last two elements and so on. So it becomes very efficient. Uh, if you're sorting array of size only, let's say, 10, 20, it's not going to make that much difference whether you put an I here or not. But imagine you're sorting array of like 20 million. That's going to make a huge difference. Okay. So this putting minus I here makes it more efficient. And of course, it's not going to change the output. It's going to, nevertheless, it's going to sort it anyhow. And you can see array before sorting unsorted and sorted. Uh, so that's the part two of bubble sort where key thing you have to understand is that there is a bubbling loop which in inefficient form runs like this. This is necessary because j plus one Uh, <clears throat> at the most, actually j at the most could be len minus 1 because then j should be le less than len and that is the last element in the inbound array, okay? And then to make this code run as many times as the number of elements in this array, uh, we wrap it inside the outer loop, which I call the sort control loop. But to make it more efficient, we have to make sure it doesn't go through the sorted portion again, and we put minus i for that. So that's actually my explanation for the logic bubble sort in and the explanation of the source code. Thank you for watching.